If you'd like to exchange your Magic Online cards for event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, you can do so by trading MTGO Academy's official bot, Academy Bybot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or add it to your buddy list. Welcome to round one. I won the die roll and I'm going to play first. No mountain yet, but a pretty nice hand with the Frog Tosser Banneret to accelerate my other goblins that also happen to be rogue, so I'm not gonna mulligan. The question is, of course, if I can... For example, if my opponent is on forest, then the combo of loggers plus bandit is going to be very, very good. Um, it is possible that my loggers get blocked by the banneret, um, that my banneret gets blocked or is, is being threatened to be blocked very, very early on. So... Here I actually cannot attack. I could offer the trade with Banneret and Moth Dust Changeling, but the mana reduction is much more important to me than trading with Moth Dust Changeling here. All right, I did draw a land. So now Boggart Mop is <laughs> actually an option. It's not really good against Stony Brook Angler though. So I think I'm just running out the loggers for two. Let's see, I could run out the Stink Drinker Bandit for three but I don't really have uh, ways to make my creature unblockable at this stage. If I play the Boggart mob, I just have to expect it to get tapped a bunch of times. The loggers aren't amazing either. Hmm. Yeah, I would I would love to like get in for damage, but I'm not gonna get through the Stony Brook angle. My opponent would just block and cannot afford to have that happen. Now this is the turn where the Banneret will is in play. So the Boggart mob actually resolves without um, me getting into trouble. I still think it's better to just play the loggers here. I'm not under so much pressure, and even though I would like to force my opponent to tap the angler already, I can still do that next turn and, and have it be a bit more, be a, be a bit better regarding my board development. Sadly, my opponent is not on forest, so the boggart loggers aren't going to be as amazing as I was hoping. Wow, Stony Brook Angler is attacking. That's that's aggressive. I'm just not going to block. Also because I'm planning to drop Boggart Mob, if possible. All right, there's some kind of trick uh, waiting for me, and I don't know what it's what it's going to be. So I could play. Well, it could just be Pestermite. That would be an option. Pestermite uh, tapping down one of my creatures, maybe. Um, then untapping the Stony Brook Angler or tapping down one of my attackers. That would definitely be an option. So the the question is if the if I can afford the Boggart Mob tempo loss. Now is Boggart Loggers getting blocked if I attack with it? That's an interesting question. I have a feeling that it's probably not getting blocked. Both of my opponent's creatures are better. Well if I if I Look at Stony Brook Angler and Pestamite, then the Boggart Loggers are just better, uh, are just worse than both of these, and I would be happy with the trade. So let's see if my opponent plays a Pestamite here. And if if the Loggers get through, I can prowl this into play and have the Scarblade Elite as well. Still interesting that the Stony Brook Angler attacked. I wasn't really. Okay, what is this? 2-2 uh, two, two flash flying and look at the top card of target player's library. I will allow my opponent to see that card. So, yeah, now it's... If my opponent blocks here, I'm actually happy about it. It's not... It's not a bad trade at all to, to trade my opponent's to to flyer here. I think this is the time where I just run out the Boggart mob. It only costs me three, and even though my opponent can lock it down for two mana, two mana is actually quite a lot. And I if I draw a mountain I can cast War Spike Changeling without problems. And um, yeah I, it's unlikely that I will be stuck not casting spells in the next couple of turns. It's also a very, it's, it's quite threatening, uh, the Boggart mob. If my opponent 
doesn't tap it down for a single turn, then I already get some value by generating the, the goblin tokens. All right, the goblin shaman, okay. This is aggressive. This is very aggressive. The Goblin Sham uh, forces me to discard cards, but that's... Uh, I, I can uh, drop the Scarblade Elite um, and then have an assass Assassin in my graveyard. But also, it doesn't really look my opponent is on a Goblin Shaman deck. He might have some Shapeshifters, but I was thinking that he's on Fairies and Merfolk. But maybe uh, he just didn't really draft a deck around um, around this. I'm not, I'm not sure. So... Drawing the mountain here is perfect. And let's attack here. I think if this gets, uh, if this is unblocked, I will just play the bandit and the elite because discarding War Spike Changeling to the Grub Fellow is going to be a pretty sweet play. I can't really imagine my opponent chump blocking here, so. This is nice. I also get a Goblin Rogue, um, which isn't irrelevant with the with the Stink Drinker Bandit coming down. So Prowl means that um, because my opponent took damage from a Goblin this turn, I only pay. I only pay two. Let's see if my opponent hits here. I'm I'm fine either way. I wouldn't love discarding the changeling, but it also wouldn't be the end of the world. Then I have an arbitrary kill spell in Scarblade Elite. And no matter what I draw, I can always mine shatter for two, or maybe even three. And then I can hopefully make sure that the Bogart mob takes over the game. I also have a blocker for the Grub Fellows in Sink Drinker Bandit. It's not amazing to to lose it, but it, it would probably be the best not to take too much damage here. Alright, my opponent didn't hit, um, which does make sense looking at the mix of creature types. Let's see. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, keeping my Bogart mob tapped is a Two for one against me, kind of. So now I still have this ability available. When my goblins deal damage, I get more more goblins. So it's not entirely irrelevant. There's the Warren Pro first, so this would this allows me to start the chain at some point. And I think I'm just going to see if I'm allowed to attack here. Stink Drinker Bandit can can definitely attack. I think uh, trading here is, is good for me. I will keep the Elite untapped because I think I will want to keep it with the potential to just kill my opponent's creatures. And then I want to uh, Mind Shatter after my opponent has spent his two mana to tap a creature. All right, beginning of combat. It's, it's possible that my opponent just taps Scarblade Elite here or even the Stink Drinker. No, tapping a Goblin Rogue, okay. Interesting, so Stink Drinker Bandit does only trade with Mothless Changeling, which isn't amazing. And I'm not even playing a creature to, not even playing a creature to block with. I might be better off not um, not attacking here because I want to have defense for this, but I would rather keep the Skyblade lead in play. So I will just allow this and mind shatter my opponent for two. Let's see what we get. Wings of Villas Vel, um, kind of a trick, and the Poplar. So kind of a good, kind of a good um, mind shatter. I think we only got two cards, so it was wasn't more than than a mind rod. But I'm still happy with the amount of uh, spells I have here and I also know that the first discard of the grub fellow is going to be kind of for free because I get to destroy a creature 
if the grub fellow hits. Let's see. All right, a miss once again. Now this, of course, can be a land, it can be a spell, or just a creature that doesn't share a creature type. So, Merrigery, you might know that from. Constructed, Stony Break Angler now with 2-3, and Moth does Changeling now with 2-2. Two, two. So this does change my strategy a bit. I'm gonna be even more defensive now. No reason to not trade here, I think. I had actually drew land, so now I can keep War Spike Changeling in hand to make the Grub Fellows weaker again uh, with the Scarblade Elite. I could also run out the Changeling in order to have another creature. No, I, I think I w if I have to discard, I want to discard the Changeling. So, casting Ron Pilferers, returning. Let's see, Burger Loggers are pretty weak. I think Stink Drinker Bandit is what I want to return. Then the Brown Pilferers get haste, but I will have one of my creatures tap down anyway, so I will just allow that to happen. I could have could have um, threatened an attack first, but I don't think my opponent would have tapped anything. There was really no no reason to. So let's get the Stink Drinker back. And now the Pilferers are not being tapped. I can attack with the Pilferers, trade with anything my opponent has. And that would probably be the Grub Fellows. Now if I don't attack, my opponent just taps down something, attacks me back. And then I might be forced to block with Scarblade Elite, which I don't want. So yeah, this is, this is kind of weird, uh, my opponent allowing the attack here. I think I want to attack then, if I have the chance. Yeah, let's just do that. I don't want to block with my Skullblade Elite anyway. And any kind of trading is good for me, I feel like. I would trade with Merrigery, of course, if, if I was given the chance. But taking, taking four here and my opponent just tapping out is actually kind of good for me, I think. Because then my Goblin Rogue would get through if my opponent doesn't have a blocker. Okay, so I'm taking two. That's that's a very fair deal. My opponent is the one that has to be afraid here, because my goblin rogues would just grow out of control with the Bogart mob and Stink Drinker Bandit, threatening to overrun my opponent. So it looks like he does have a blocker, unfortunately. And it's actually a merfolk. So this is pretty nice. What does this do? I think, yeah, it's not gonna do much. Uh, you can you can mill your opponent for a bit if that's what you want. So no attacking for me. I need to get the war spike changeling into play. And that's pretty much it. Let's see if my opponent taps a creature if I if I threaten to attack. At some point I might be forced to block with Scarblade Elite because I cannot take an arbitrary amount of damage here. So I do need to draw into one of the many raised dead effects or one of my five or six drops here. Okay, this is nice. I, I really like this because now my opponent might want to tap down the changeling to get aggressive, but then I'm not I'm not taking too much damage either way. And I do have to hope that my opponent draws a land at some point. Yeah, like like now. <laughs> Actually showing me is kind of nice. Because now I don't think that it makes sense for my opponent to be too aggressive. Okay. I'm drawing a land too, so that's fair. This angler is really uh, putting me through the loops. Um, it's really tough to play against and all these untapping and flash cards don't really make it easier. All right, this happens and I just play 
Stink Drinker Bandit, I'm clearly never attacking here. Alright. I'm not even sure if milling me is something that my opponent would want to do. Okay, it looks like... Yes, that's something he wants to do. Um, because I could I could hit Assassins or Changelings for my Scarblade lead. So Inspired Sprite is a problem, or will be a problem in the long run. It's gonna either attack me, which I think I can deal with, but it could also just start uh, drawing my opponent into so much good stuff. Alright, nothing happening here. Let's see, the War Spike Changeling is probably going to get tapped again. The fact that my deck doesn't have a lot of removal is a problem here. And I probably should have just blocked the Stony Brook Angler the one time I had the chance. Uh, even if my opponent cast Wings of Velisvel, I still wouldn't have lost anything in the exchange. That Glimmer does nap uh, is also kind of unfortunate, but let's see how this develops. I'm far from dead here, and if my opponent continues to draw Murfolks or, or Wizards, then my Scarblade Elite might actually get some fuel at some point. Alright, I think that's an assassin here. Uh, Wheat Pruner Poplar is an assassin, so now Scarblade Elite is active. My opponent drew Steambed Acrotect, though, though, so that's quite the powerful card. Target Murfolk gets Island Walk, uh, or, or something gets an island, so uh, that's actually beatable, uh, quite beatable. Let's see what happens here. The assassin gets tapped, so now I want to be destroying some kind of creature. And the Stony Brook Angler is also still there. It would probably make the most sense to just tap the sprite because it would uh, it, it can damage me for certain. Alternatively, I can kill the Marrow Regery because the Regery uh, pumps everything else my opponent has. I could I maybe I should have actually killed the Regery just uh, before my opponent would have been able to to play this. Killing the Regery to not take too much damage or killing Inspired Sprite to not allow my opponent to have this available. This is the, the two options that I'm considering. Killing the Angler is actually not the worst either because then my War Spike Changeling will be active and hold off everything that my opponent can do on the ground. And if it dies, then I get to kill the Inspired Sprite. So that might actually be the best play. I do take a bunch of damage that turn. But I will just chump lock with the Goblin Rogue. And after, if my opponent decides to tap the Stink Drinker. Yeah, let's try that. Exile an Assassin. And now I will take a bit of damage, but hopefully getting rid of the Angler gives me the best shot uh, with regards to taking over the ground with War Spike Changeling. And clearly I have to prevent some damage here. Okay, that's another land. I'll just say go. Not much I can do here. See if my opponent continues milling me. No. I should only take two damage here from the inspired sprite. Maybe even zero if, if um, my opponent decides to loot away a card. Yeah, probably drew drew a land and now wants to draw something better. Uh, no attacks. That's good at least. I will play out all my lands because if I draw a card like Warren Pilferers or something like that, I need to 
be able to cast whatever I want to cast. Okay, so my, my opponent's looting is now taking over. Do need to get rid of the sprite at some point. Hmm, not a great card to draw here. Protection from elves is kind of a bummer. Could actually attack with the War Spike Changeling to force through 5 damage. Because if my opponent doesn't block, I deal 5. And then I don't have it on defense, but I I can block with some losses. I'm I'm feeling the need to do something here. I'm not I'm not winning this game if if I'm just staying behind. So let's see what happens if I attack with the changeling. Okay, my pawn blocks. That's fine. So now my the changeling goes into the graveyard. Okay, that's fine. And I get to activate the elite again, which is what I wanted. So I do need to hold it hold it up for defense this turn. But I can uh, then kill the inspired sprite. My opponent didn't mill me with Ink Dissolver again, sadly. I would have liked to get some more cards into my graveyard. I don't think that being milled out is the biggest concern here. I did allow my opponent another activation of the sprite, but I didn't really see how I could do without the defense of Scarblade lead. Just having the threat of killing my Regiri available is, is too important, I think. So let's kill this. I cannot beat the, the card advantage of Inspired Sprite in a, in a long game. I'm already regretting having this in my deck. Uh, this looks embarrassingly bad. My opponent is super slow. Uh, I'm, I'm pausing all the time. And my opponent is already down to less than 10 minutes. Alright, more lands. It's very possible that the card advantage of, of the Inspired Sprite is just not something that I'm beating here. It's theoretically possible that my opponent is also on nothing and scared to attack. Looks like that's what's happening. I think there was an attack there for my opponent somewhere. But I'm not going to complain. And now I have my own pumper. It does allow me to get my uh, make my goblins a bit larger. Okay, that could be some kind of flash creature. Violet Paul. Destroy target on that creature. And you get a 1-1 flyer. All right. So the Ove is dead. That would have been a nice card. I would have been able to sacrifice the Bogart mob or get through in the air, both of which would be would have been nice. And this would have been amazing with the Ove. Huh. Too bad. It is very good on defense though, I'm not complaining about the torch runner. At some point if my opponent draws another Murfolk to tap something down, then I might be in trouble. But currently I'm taking one in the air, which is fine. Okay, this looks scary. Benthic Core, I think I passed that in the draft. Two one more Murfolk wizard creature tokens and you can untap him and give him Shroud. Alright, that's okay I guess. It's it's very powerful, but not much I can do about it. Is this any kind of Merfolk? Yeah, so this basically has Shroud for what it's worth.
Thorntooth Ridge. Oh, that's nice. It's uh, still far away from having any kind of tree folk, but it's a very solid creature to have. Might just allow me to survive if my opponent ever becomes more aggressive. I still have the Nameless Inversion in my in my deck, so it, it's a card that I would love to draw with a Thorntooth Ridge and a Scarblade Elite in play. Okay, now things get a little dicey. Mirror Harbinger, my opponent gets another Merfolk, my opponent gets an Island War creature with the Acrotect in play, and we'll be tapping a creature this turn and the next, with Benthicore potentially attacking me. Maybe even tapping down Mudbot and Torch Runner. Yeah, that's what I thought. It would have been my best blocker by far. Not super scared of the Benthic Core. I think I can beat the Benthic Core, but the Mirror Harbinger is, is a problem. I'm also losing in the air <laughs> with the Fairy Rogue, so... Yeah, just a changeling. Okay, this looks like my chance to kill the Benthicore. Maybe by blocking with Thorntooth Ridge and Scarblade Elite, which allows me to keep everything else. It's still not great, but at least I get rid of the 5-5. And any other block allows my opponent to 2 for 1 me, which I don't want. So it's kind of sad to see the Scarblade Elite go, but I don't, th I don't think I have much of a choice here. I'm barely surviving this anyway, I need to top deck. And I don't know if... what I can actually draw. It's too bad that the Lowland Oath got killed, otherwise I think I would have been in, in fine condition with the chance to sacrifice this, sacrifice this, and so on. Okay, Thorntooth Ridge goes down, which means I get to keep the Elite, at least. Another land is probably not doing it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I think I'm just dead if my opponent taps down another creature with the with the changeling that he's drawing and smartly not revealing any kind of card uh, with the ink dissolver means that my Scarblade Elite is not going to do much for me. So here I will be able to block three of my opponent's creatures and then I'm dead attacking with everything yeah okay that's it that was not a great draw yeah maybe some of these cards would have helped I also don't know if I if I played my Skyblade Assassin optimally that's another thing but all right um i definitely need some more removal uh, even for my opponent's small creatures there's so many cards that uh give me give me trouble so i i think i won't draw off the crowd uh let's see these are all pretty bad this is okay i guess fester creep yeah i, I don't like the symmet symmetric uh, effect of fester creep there was a couple of 1-1s one -ones my opponent created, but also I have I have my own 1-1s, one -one, so it doesn't really seem like something I want to be doing. Now, the Boggart is a nice switch for the Buffoon. Question is, what do I take out for the Roar of the Crowd? Maybe a Birthright, because my opponent is not killing all my stuff all that much. Maybe the Frog Toss a Banneret, it, it just didn't, didn't really do anything. Well, I also put it below the Boggart mob, but I wouldn't have done anything, let's put it that way. Kind of, I really like the Birthright, I would have loved to draw one. In conjunction with the Nameless Inversion, it's kind of, kind of fixes the problems that my deck has. So, the question is if I can live without the Banneret, or if that would, um, would just be a problem. Stink Drinker Bandit also wasn't amazing. Maybe I take it out. Yeah, let's try it that way. My deck is just not really aggressive, so it's not something that I need. This is kind of sweet, uh, with the Banneret once again uh, maybe being better than I give him credit for. 
at this point not threatening to run out both of these next turn but still uh, I, have, I have a harbinger which is which is huge for the first time so I think I just want to have I just want to have nameless inversion every single time every single game I also don't want to chain harbingers because I, I want to draw them to find something else what I could do is play the harbinger to get um, the Roar and Pilferers. I think that's the alternative that I have. Because Roar and Pilferers with this hand is also very powerful. Oh, let's see. I can play the Changeling this turn, and next turn Harbinger plus... plus Pump. Or I play the Harbinger now, then I can play Changeling plus Nameless Inversion. Yeah, Nameless Inversion is better here. That way I at least have the Inversion for all kinds of shenanigans that I want to... That I want to be doing. And I also have Reed Pruner Propla on 5, so my curve is actually pretty amazing. Okay, my opponent is conceding, probably because of the time. Also a mulligan to 6, I think, but this was still a very premature concession. Alright, so it's down to game 3. I like the sideboarding, I think. Yeah. I like the roar of the crowd. I need to get rid of my opponent's utility creatures, and I will have some some amount of goblins in play. This is nice, although it's a kind of a, a slow hand. I like the the option to mind shatter at some point, and my opponent hasn't really shown creatures that kill me super quickly. Maybe the ink dissolver does though. Uh, a two or a three drop is what I need to draw with this hand. The power level of the creatures in this in this set, they, they work really well together and they synergize, but none of them are super powerful on their own, so it's unlikely that you just lose because your opponent curves out. Two drop? No. No luck there. Nameless inversion would also be insane. Uh, my opponent doesn't hit, otherwise I uh, would have potentially drawn into a three uh, into a two drop effectively with the birthright. Let's see if there's a three drop coming from my opponent. No play can always mean the flash creature. Now I'm getting punished with the with the birthright's excessive amounts of them. So yeah, this hand is not developing nicely. Also this these cards are completely worthless. Streambed Acrodex is a is a tough card to play against. It's just really, really good. However, this War Spike Changeling might be really good. I could actually trade it with the Ink Dissolver just to enable my birthrights. And then my opponent will uh, pump it. But I'm fine with trading. Oh this is interesting. This is the plus four the some creature turns into a four four again. It's the only card that I can think of that makes sense here. I kind of want to trade just to delay the game and to get my to get the birthrights going. Don't think I can afford to mind shatter. Pun stuck on lands, no not anymore. So now it's it gets interesting. Do I block here is the first question. I think I do. Then the Acrotex will pump this. My opponent drops something. And I would love to mind shatter. Alternatively I hold back I just keep the change link, take my three, mind shatter anyway, and my opponent has this, this. Yeah, I think it's better to take the damage. That way I have a blocker for my opponent's next play, uh for my opponent's two creatures. Oh no play. That means a flash creature, I'm I'm very sure. It's the only the only explanation. So maybe the sprite is coming down at instant speed. No, counter spell. That's very unfortunate. No 
Okay, my opponent won the clash with Scattering Stroke. My god. So, then I will get milled by four cards anyway. The question is... Yeah, so then now I need to put the Swamp on the bottom so that I get milled... So that more spells get milled to make it more likely that Bogart Birthright will find something sweet to find, like the Nameless Inversion that I'm that I'm looking for every single time. I found the Poplar and the Harbinger, not what I was looking for, but uh, also not the worst. So I'm just going to block here to prevent some damage. It's not an efficient use of my... Of my mana, of my of my creatures, but I I'm kind of forced to just get going. So yeah, this scattering stroke is is just going to get cast, and I can really not do anything about it. But um, I'll try to get the harbinger in play as a way to to get the nameless inversion. My opponent is going to counter it, but I'm not. I can't really change it, so. Another clash. Uh, my opponent won again. That's so unfortunate with Violet Paul also. I can Bogart Birthright something back. And my opponent can destroy a non-black creature next turn. Well, has is threatening to destroy a non-black creature. I'm gonna get back the Harbinger this, this turn. And then I'm threatening to Harbinger plus mob next turn, just to have a huge blocker. This was some pretty sick countering going on with Broken Ambitions on Mind Shatter and so on. Okay. I take two. Ghostly Changeling, that's nice. Uh, I'm just assuming that I'm not getting countered again here. Can't really do anything against it if, if that should happen. I also made a mistake here by not um, by by playing the land that was uh, absolutely unnecessary if the grub fellows uh, should trigger so do I want nameless inversion do I maybe want Warren pilferers to get some value oh, the Warren pilferers look look pretty good as well I could also get more harbingers just, just to chain all of these into each other so the question is, what is Harbinger? Harbinger looks a lot better now, I have to say. Warren Pilferers gets me nothing great, but the War Spike Changeling is actually pretty good. I think that's probably more important than removal at this stage. I'm just gonna get a Pilferers and play the Boggart mob, not being afraid of anything. And at least that worked out, so. If I have to discard here, then um, playing the land would have was was really bad. Looks like I got around that at least. Uh, now my opponent gets some more Merlefork. That's pretty good for him. Doesn't have a super good blocker for Boggart Mob though. I think I'm fine with the Moongloff Changeling. And I'm drawing Warren Pilferers, so everything is looking fine. Warren Pilferers can get back Worse Bike Changeling. It can actually get back any kind of creature, so I'm not, I don't have to take uh, a Goblin. It just makes more sense to take a Goblin. So I have a feeling that my opponent wants to block Boggart Mob. It doesn't really want to give me uh, creatures here. So what I could do would just be to attack with Boggart Mob first, and if my opponent wants to kill it, then I can just get back the Boggart Mob. That seems pretty sweet. And if not, I get a I get a 1-1 one, one to block with, so it's pretty much a win-win situation. No blocks, thank you. Uh, now I just run out my both of my creatures. And the one thing I'm not sure about is what to get, um, what to get. But I think I'm just taking the lowland oath. That seems more important than having another changeling creature in play. 
and the oath has a very relevant ability whereas the poplar right now seems uh, pretty bad war spike changing is good with the first strike i have to consider that but i think i'm just gonna be trading my creatures anyway so i want something to win the race if if necessary oh yeah i I didn't consider that my opponent is going to force me to discard something anyway, so the Roran Pilfer's ability is actually not doing anything. And I want the Changeling in play, so... Yeah, uh, the Roran Pilfer is this turn not really amazing because the Lowland Ove is getting, getting discarded. Yep, I uh, didn't think that through. And my opponent also has the Violet Paw, so I actually um, I shouldn't have returned a red creature anyway. That was a that was unnecessary. So here the Harbinger is threatening to become a 3-4. I cannot kill that. But I can kill the, the Grub Fellows and I should not take uh, any additional damage here. Okay, down to 7. That's actually fine. And now... My opponent didn't leave a blocker for, for this Goblin Rogue, so my Bogart mob will will be triggering. I think this is pretty good for me. Take seven, I get two. Sure. And now this ghostly changeling is actually yeah this this moon of changing is something that my my opponent needed in play much earlier i think there's another borgard harbinger that's kind of nice so ghostly changing would just trade with moon of changeling so i don't want to play that i think i'm just getting the nameless inversion now i could get warren pilferers and chain warren pilferers but I don't even have the mana to do that. Uh, I could play Warren Pilfers into anything else from my graveyard, but that doesn't look amazing. Could get Bogart Loggers to kill the Changeling, but I always want Nameless Inversion, so let's put that on top. And then I'm passing the turn because I don't want to attack into this. I should not have six. My opponent can try to be aggressive here, but Mirror Harbinger plus Stream Bad Aqueduct only deals two. There's the Poplar, that's a good one. Actually quite interesting, now my opponent doesn't have the mana to activate the Changeling, so I can, I can change my line of play here by just attacking with Ghostly Changeling first, and then seeing what happens. The Poplar is quite good, so I might just want to Nameless Inversion that. No blocks. I think that's not a good idea. Three, four, five, eight. Yep, uh, what a game. Uh, definitely already saw the complexity of all of this. Um, my opponent was in time trouble because game one took too long. I didn't really think I was winning this after these uh, counter shenanigans. However, the Bogart mob ability was really key and somehow my opponent didn't really make use of his mana in the most efficient way possible. Not blocking here was also just um, leaving himself dead to an onboard trick. Uh, he definitely had to block there. So yeah, uh, I somehow got out of this and I will be fighting in round two.